first let me welcome everyone to this uh, live stream on Saturday, I think it's the 11th of April. And um, such a beautiful morning out. I was out for a few moments earlier and mm, it reminds me of the boathouse. So I hope that one day soon we'll be able to get back to the boathouse uh, where we can uh, practice in that beautiful environment. In the meantime, we have this, and I guess this is enough for the moment. So find a, a comfortable seated position, and then let your eyes close down. Bring your awareness to your breath, and begin to feel the breath as it flows in and flows out. Allow your breath to lengthen, perhaps five or even six counts in, and the same on the exhale. So bringing greater and greater awareness to the process of breathing and to the feeling of the breath as it flows in and out of your body. Let's find a couple more breaths, just relaxing into the seated position. Try not to induce strain or stiffness as you sit. Just relax. That's it. Now let it go. <sighs> I thought we'd begin this morning's session uh, with a uh, meditation on heartbeat. This meditation is one that I developed, oh, maybe a year or so ago. And it helped me to connect with people everywhere. And the mechanism, the vehicle for doing that is the heartbeat. So let your eyes close down again. And once your eyes are closed, bring your awareness, your attention to your heartbeat. Begin to feel your heart beating. And remember, you probably won't feel it in the chest. Common to feel it in the mouth or in the nasal passages, sometimes in the fingertips or the toes. So take a few moments to tune into the heart beating wherever you feel it in your body. Now, once you find that spot that's most prominent for the heartbeat, where you can really feel the heart beating, begin now to no notice the rhythm of the heartbeat. Notice how quickly or slowly the heart's beating. And now soften into that awareness. Letting go of everything else, all the cares and worries. And bring your total attention, your total awareness to that single heartbeat. Now let your awareness range beyond your body and beyond your heartbeat and begin to visualize the heartbeats of everyone else, either in your home or your neighborhood. Imagine all those hearts beating simultaneously. 
recognizing that we each share this one wonderful, miraculous thing, the heartbeat. Now let your awareness range even farther out. And imagine everyone in the city, wherever you are, and imagine their hearts beating just as yours is. Begin to feel in to this collective heartbeat of everyone in your city or town, whoever they are, whatever their circumstances, everyone's heart beating as one. Let your awareness now expand even farther and begin to feel the heartbeat of everyone in the state where you currently reside. Imagine those millions of heartbeats all occurring simultaneously. Now let your awareness range even farther to the state where you're located. Feel the heart. Notice the beat. And now let your awareness range to everyone in the whole country. And begin to visualize, to imagine those hundreds of millions of heartbeats. All beating together at the same time almost beating as one heart. Let your awareness expand now and begin to notice the heartbeat of all souls everywhere, all beings on the whole planet, all seven and a half billion people with their hearts beating all at the same time in very much the same way. Tune in to that universal heartbeat of everyone everywhere. And now know that whenever you need to, you can connect with everyone everywhere by experiencing their heartbeat, just as you experience your own. Draw a deep breath in now, and then let it go. Let's do that one more time, a deep breath in. And let it go. And let your eyes open now. Let's begin our active practice now. And I'd like to begin on the back. So let's start on our back. And begin in legs up the wall, pressing the heels up towards the sky. The palms are pressing down gently into the mat. And then relax the back of your shoulders. So the back of the shoulders come down towards the mat and gently press the heels towards the sky. Just let the breath move softly through your body. Feel the tailbone pressing down and also the lower back pressing down. Try and relax your legs a little so that you're not creating tension in the legs. Now bend the knees and hug the knees into the body. Relax the shoulders again. And now let's find happy baby pose. Bring the hands to the pinky toe side of the feet. 
The soles of the feet are reaching towards the sky. I noticed some of you were practicing outside when you had your cameras on. That's lovely. As I said, soon we'll be doing that together as well. Relax the back of the shoulders in happy baby pose. And a couple more breaths. Just let it soften. Now transfer the left hand to the right foot. So both hands are on the right foot, straighten the right leg or left leg and point the toes on the left foot. And then keep a hold of your right foot, keep the left leg straight and let the left foot come all the way down to the mat. That's gonna create a big stretch in the back of your right leg and that right hip. Maybe that left heel comes all the way down for you. Now maybe tug that right foot down a little bit closer to your chest, but the sole of that foot is still reaching towards the sky. Now slowly bring that left leg all the way back up and then bend the left knee back to happy baby pose with the pinky toes or with the hands on the pinky toe side of the feet. Release your right hand from your right foot, bring the right hand to the left foot now and then straighten the left leg or right leg rather, point the toes on the right foot, and then slowly bring that right leg all the way down. Keep the right leg straight. And if you can, let that right heel come down to the mat. Now maybe hug that left foot down a little bit more, feeling that big stretch in the back of the left leg. Now slowly bring that right leg back up, nice and slow so you feel that in the back of the left leg. Now bring the soles of the feet together and cup your hands or interlace your fingers if you want on the outside, the pinky toe side of the feet. And then bring your tailbone down to the mat and see if you can bring your heels closer to your pubic bone, letting the knees move apart from one another. Flatten out the back a little bit. You're gonna feel this probably on the inner part of the thighs, maybe the outer part of the hips. One more breath. Now release that, reach the heels up to the sky, back to legs up the wall pose, and then bend the knees and bring the soles of the feet to the mat. Keep your left foot on the mat and bring your right ankle to your left knee. We're gonna find a supine figure four here. Now interlace the hands just above that left knee and hug the left knee in as you press the right knee away. This will create a stretch in the outside of the right hip. The more you hug that left knee in, the more you press that right knee away, the greater the stretch becomes. Let's find two more breaths. And one more. Hi, Jack. and release, bring the right foot down so the sole of the right foot is on the mat. And then we're moving the other side. So bring the left ankle to the right knee, interlace the fingers behind that right leg and hug the right knee in as you press the left knee away. Remember to flex the left foot, which will protect the muscles. It engages the muscles in that left knee and protects the knee. So the more you can hug that right knee in, the greater the stretch on the outside of the left hip. Let's find three more breaths. And two more. And one more breath. And that's it, let it go. Reach both legs up to the sky. Again, legs up the wall pose, stretch it up. So press up through the heels. Now point the toes and stretch the toes towards the sky. Start to feel that stretch in the top of the feet. Now pull the toes down towards your face and press your heels up and feel that stretch in the back of the legs. Now bend the knees, bring the soles of the feet to the mat as if we were preparing for bridge pose, which we're going to do. We're going to do a dynamic version of bridge pose. So make sure your heels are under your knees. Now on an inhale, 
slowly lift your tailbone off the mat and then reach your arms up and overhead so that the back of the hands come to rest on the floor behind you. Press the hips a little bit higher. On your exhale, bring the hands down and bring the tailbone down so that they land at the same time. Do that again, inhale, reaching up and over with the hands, lifting the hips simultaneously, and exhale, bringing the hands and the tailbone down. We'll do that three more times. Inhale, reaching up and overhead. Press the hips a little bit higher, and exhale, bring the hands and the hips down so they land at the same time. One more time, actually twice more. Press the hips high, reaching with the hands, and exhale, bring the palms down, and one more time. Press up with the hips, and reaching with the hands, and then exhale, and bring the hands and the hips down at the same time. Now reach the right hand up and over, and then press the hips high, so the left palm is still by your side and pressing into the mat. The right hand is reaching up and overhead, and the hips are high. Now we're going to switch out the arms as we bring the hips down. So the right hand comes down. The left hand reaches up and overhead. Now lift the hips and switch out the arms. And again, right hand comes down. The left hand reaches up. The hips are down now. Inhale, lift the hips. Bring the left hand down. The right hand reaches up and over and twice more. Right hand comes down. Left hand reaches. And the last one, bring the left hand down, reach the right hand up and over, press your hips a little bit higher. Then as you exhale, bring the right hand down, the hips are still high. Now bring the tailbone down to the mat. From there, hug your knees into your body, and then bring your forehead up, forehead touches the knees if you can. Now slowly rock forward and back. Nice and slow. Just a nice little gentle massage of the low back. And then come down to your back again. Bring your arms out to a T and reach the knees up towards the sky. The knees are bent and the heels are, or toes are reaching down towards the mat. The heels are pretty near your butt. Now press the palms into the floor and then bring your knees to the right like we're doing a supine twist, but let the knees hover an inch or so above the mat. And then on an inhale, bring the knees up through center and over to the left side. We're gonna just flow this way, massaging the tailbone, the low back, the upper, upper part of the gluteal muscles, also engaging the abdominal muscles and the transverse abdominal muscles as we continue flowing from side to side. Let your breath sync up with the movement. And we'll find it a couple more times on each side. Nice and slow. So slow it down a little bit. It creates more engagement, brings more energy to the pose. And last time to the right, and then to the left, and back to center. Hug your knees in, bring your forehead towards the knees, and then rock yourself forward into a seated position. Hmm. Once you're seated, reach your arms up and overhead. Bring the palms together and interlace the fingers. Now invert the palms, stretch the palms towards the sky, press the sitting bones down, and roll back on your sitting bones a little bit. Then draw your navel in, reach up through the palms even higher, really stretch. Now take a little bend to the right, just a gentle one, and back to center and a little bend to the left, and back to center, stretch up high. Now release your hands and bring them down behind you, interlace your fingers behind your back. Lift the arms up if you can, the hands up. Let me show you this from the side like that, but keep the spine nice and long, and then draw your navel in so you're not arching the low back. Now hinge at the hips and fold forward. Keep your chin in a neutral position as you reach your knuckles up and overhead. Now engage the core and slowly begin to rise. Once you're up, release your hands, reach them high, and then exhale the hands back to heart center. 
Once you're at heart center, bring the arms out to a T. With the palms facing down, relax your fingers, relax your hands. Bring the right hand down. Stay heavy in the left sitting bone. Reach the left hand up and over and bend your right elbow. Start to feel a nice stretch on the right side of the body, probably all the way from the hips through the armpit. On an inhale, rise slowly. Feel the core engage as you come up and bring the left hand down. Reach the right hand up and over. Relax that right hand. Relax the fingers. Now press that right sitting bone down so you feel a big stretch on the right side, all the way from the armpit to the hip. And on an inhale, again, rise all the way back up. Reach the arms high. And exhale to heart center. <sighs> inhale, reach back high. Arms to a T. Let's take a twist to the right and bring the left hand to the right knee. The right hand is down behind you with the fingers pointing off to the right. So you're externally rotating that right arm. Now look over the right shoulder as you press both sitting bones down. Take a deep breath. Let the breath go, but stay in the posture. Do that again, a deep breath in and let it go. Now come back to center, reach the arms high and to heart center. Now inhale, reach up to a 45 degree angle. Let's open up the shoulders a little bit. Eagle arms, bring the right elbow under the left elbow, palms together. On an inhale, lift the elbows up, lift them up a little bit higher and now even a little bit higher, really stretch it out. And release, reach the arms high. Now bend the elbows and bring your fingers to the top of your shoulders. And we're just gonna circle the elbows down as low as you can and then back and up. A couple times around, maybe three times around that direction and then we're gonna go back the other way. And just keep your fingers on the top of your shoulders if you can. And let it go. Reach the arms back high. And then to a 45 degree angle, let's find eagle arms on the other side. Left elbow on your right, palms together. Now you'll start with your elbows about level with the shoulders. And I can turn to the side to show you this. And see if you can lift your elbows up a little bit more. Notice how that increases the stretch. Now maybe even lift the elbows a little higher, deepening the stretch quite a bit in the shoulders. Jackalosis pose. And now release. And back to center, reach the arms high. And to heart center, now out to a T. Let's take our twist to the left, right hand to left knee, left hand down behind you. Look over your left shoulder. Take a deep breath in. And then exhale and let the breath go. Stay in the posture, deep breath in. And let it go. One more time, big deep breath. Ah. Now bring it back to center, reach the arms high, and then bring the hands behind you, the hands with the pinkies almost touching one another, press the palms into the mat, your fingers are pointing towards the back of the room. As you do that, press the palms into the mat even a little bit more, and then let your head drop back. Lift your chin as high as you're able to, and take three deep breaths. Deepening the back bend, pressing your chest towards the sky. One more breath. Now slowly lean forward. You'll find the weight coming off the hands. The arms want to float up and overhead. Let that happen. Then as you exhale, bring the hands to heart center. And pause there. And let your eyes close down. Just take a breath. And one more, deep breath in. And let it go. Let's find all fours now. So bring the hands so that they're under the shoulders, the knees are right under the hips. Now cow and cat, inhale to cow pose, lifting your chin high, reaching the tailbone away from the knees and pressing the hands into the mat. As you exhale, Cat pose, lift the navel up towards the sky and let your forehead come down towards your thighs. Now just continue flowing between cow 
and exhale into cat and inhale to cow and exhale to cat. About three more breaths flowing between cow and cat. Twice more, inhaling to cow and exhaling to cat. One more time, inhale to cow and exhale to cat. Then come back to a neutral spine. Once you're back to a neutral spine, lift your navel up a little bit so you take the arch out of the low back. Keep your hands where they are. Press the fingertips and the palms into the mat. Now press your tailbone back towards your heels, coming towards child's pose. On an inhale, rise back up through table pose, and then glide the hips forward and down, straightening the elbows. Press the palms into the mat. Let your ears rise up. On an inhale, rise back to table pose. Then move back towards child's pose. We're gonna do this three times, going through this flow, and then we're gonna modify that flow. Glide the hips forward to the table, and then down, lift the chin. And one more time, pressing the hands into the mat, tailbone reaching towards the heels. Back towards child's pose, rise towards table pose, through table pose, gliding the hips forward and down. Lift the chin. Now come back to table pose and pause. Now press the hips back just about six inches and then bring the hips forward about six inches. From there, tuck your toes and then lift your hips into downward facing dog. Stretch your hands into the mat, lots of length in the spine. Now glide the hips forward, coming to plank pose. Make sure your hips are aligned with your shoulders and heels. Take a big breath. We're going to find three breaths in plank pose. Two more. Big, deep breath. Keep pressing your hands into the mat. And one more. Big, deep breath. You can do it. Then as you exhale, bend the knees and come back to table pose. Now glide the hips back. So the tailbone reaches towards the heels, then rise through table pose, gliding the hips forward and down into our knees down, upward facing dog. As you exhale back to table pose, bring the hips back just a little bit and then forward just like we did before. Now we're gonna tuck the toes and lift the hips into downward facing dog. Second time here. Now glide forward to, to uh, plank pose. Almost forgot where we were going. Take a deep breath. Just one breath here as you exhale, bring the knees to the mat and then back towards child's pose, rising through table pose to a knees down upward facing dog. And then back to table pose, hips come back a little and then forward just a little. Now tuck the toes and lift the hips, downward facing dog. Third time in downward dog, starting to feel that in the back of the legs, pressing the heels down towards the mat. Two more breaths in downward dog. And one more. Now glide forward to plank pose. Make sure your hips are aligned with your shoulders and heels. Knees come down. Press back towards child's pose. We're going to speed up a little bit. Glide the hips forward and down. Upward facing dog. Then move towards downward facing dog. Now lift your right leg high. Now three-legged dog, open the hips to the right. Keep pressing the hands into the mat, press your left heel down towards the mat. Now level your hips. Bring the right foot down so it meets the left foot. We're back to downward dog. Glide forward to plank pose. Leave your right hand on the mat. Reach the left hand high, side plank. Bring the left hand down. Bring the knees to the mat. Press back towards child's pose. Then glide forward towards upward facing dog. This time bring your knees off the mat if you can in upward dog. And then when you're ready, toes tuck as the hips rise. 
into downward facing dog, stretch it out. Lots of length in the spine, reaching your tailbone up and back. Feel the sensations in the back of both legs as you press the heels towards the mat. On an inhale, left leg rises, three-legged dog, open the hips to the left this time, working on stacking the left hip over the right hip. Remember to press both palms into the mat. Now, level the hips, bring the left foot down so it meets the right foot, glide forward to plank pose. Then this time, left hand on the mat, right hand reaches high into side plank. One more breath. Now bring the right hand down, back to plank pose. Three breaths now, breathe in deeply and out completely. And in and out. And one more, deep breath in and let it go. Bring the knees to the mat, press the tailbone back towards the heels, child's pose. Rise through table pose, to upward facing dog, knees off the mat if you can. The elbows are straight, the hands are pressing into the mat. Press the navel forward, lift the ears up a little bit. As you exhale, back towards downward facing dog, tucking the toes and lengthening the spine. On an inhale, right leg rises, three legged dog. Reach that right knee high, stacking the right hip over the left hip. Now level the hips, bring the right foot down, back to downward dog, glide forward to plank pose. Foot off the mat into a more dynamic version of side plank. Bring the left foot down, left hand comes down. Take a deep breath. Knees come to the mat, press the tailbone back towards the heels, glide forward into upward facing dog, bringing the knees off the mat. Now downward facing dog, tucking the toes and pressing the hips up and back. On an inhale, left leg rises, lift it up nice and high and then three legged dog bending the left knee Stack that left hip over the right hip. Make sure your shoulders stay square to the front of the mat. Level the hips now and bring the left foot down. Glide forward to plank pose. Center your left hand, side plank. You can reach that right hand forward and pick the right foot up if you like. Bringing a little bit more energy to the pose. Now left foot comes down, the right foot comes down, right hand comes down. Bring the knees to the mat. Bring the knees apart a little bit. Now child's pose, the big toes come together. Let your forehead come down and rest on the mat. Five breaths in child's pose. Three more breaths. Keep it going. Two more breaths. Let the breath deepen. And one more. Rise now from child's pose. And then bring your feet so they're about hip width apart. And back to almost to table pose. And now just straighten your legs, lift your hips, and then walk the feet forward into a standing forward fold. First time there. Feet are about hip width apart. Let your forehead come down. So the forehead is coming towards the shins. Bring the weight into the front of the feet. And bring the arms out to a T. Press into the front of the feet and rise slowly, rising all the way back up. Reach your arms high and exhale the hands to heart center, palms pressing together. Now reach the arms out with the palms facing down so your arms are straight in front of you. Then bend your knees. Bring the weight into the heels, back to a chair pose, or 
for our first chair pose. Now press into the heels and rise all the way back up. And then exhale, bend the knees and come down into chair pose again. Do that a second time, rising, feeling that in the quadriceps and down. And inhale and up, and exhale and down, and inhale and up, and exhale and down. One more time, inhale and up. Exhale and down, keep the knees bent, bring the hands to the mat, press the palms into the mat, lift your hips, let your head drop down, breathe. Bring your arms to a T, press into the soles of the feet and rise. Reach the arms high and then to heart center. Let your eyes close down, take two breaths. And one more. Now bring your thumbs to the bottom of your chin. And on an inhale, press the thumbs into the chin, lift your chin. Now lift the elbows and find a back bend so you're looking up towards the sky. Release the thumbs from the chin, reach the arms high. Now hinge at the hips and fold forward, bringing the hands down to the mat. You're in a standing forward fold at the front of the mat. Step your left foot back leaving the right foot forward. Now step the right foot back to plank pose. Bring the knees to the mat. Chest and chin follow as you inchworm your way into cobra pose. Lift the heart up off the mat in cobra pose. The elbows stay bent in cobra. Release down. Now tuck your toes, push to plank, and lift your hips into downward facing dog. On an inhale, left leg rises, lift it up high, and then step the left foot forward so it ends up between the hands. Right foot follows, standing forward fold. Let your head drop down. Three breaths now in the standing forward fold. Breathe deeply. Release the head. Let the head get a little heavier so the forehead comes closer to the shins. Now bring the hands behind you, interlace the fingers behind the back, reach the knuckles towards the sky. Relax your head again, let it get heavy. Press into the front of the feet and rise slowly, coming all the way up. Once you're up, pause. Feel the shoulder blades coming closer together on the back as you press your knuckles down towards your heels. Release the hands now, reach them high and exhale the hands to heart center, palms pressed together. Now thumbs to the chin again, lift the chin, look up and back, bend the knees. Release the thumbs, reach up high, and fold forward, bring the hands all the way down to the mat. Step the right foot back this time, the left foot is forward. Now the left foot follows, plank pose, Bring your knees to the mat, chest and chin, inchworm your way into cobra pose. Second cobra pose, elbows bent, heart, navel pressing forward. Release from cobra all the way down. Now tuck your toes, push to plank, and then lift the hips into downward facing dog. On an inhale, right leg rises, lift it high, and then step the right foot forward. So it ends up between the hands, just pause, breathe, press back on that left heel. Now begin to straighten the right leg and then pivot on the right heel and the ball of the left foot until you come to wide-legged stance, prasarita. The feet are apart three, four, five feet and the feet are parallel to one another with the toes pointing towards the left side of the mat. Leave your left hand right below your face, press the left palm into the mat, and then reach the right hand high as we come into a wide-legged twist. The spine stays long, and the head is in a nice neutral position, so try not to drop your head down. Now bring the right hand down, put it where the left hand was, reach the left hand high as we twist to the second side. And one more time on each side, left hand down, Right hand reaching, spine is still long. Press your tailbone towards the uh, right side of your mat. And last time, right hand down, left hand reaching, stretch it up. 
Now bring the left hand down so both the left and right hand are below your face. Elbows are straight. Lengthen the spine. Press your tailbone back. Keep your gaze down right at your thumbs, right at the tips of the thumbs. But think about stretching the top of your head forward. Now slowly walk both hands over to the right leg and see if you can align your upper body with your right leg. It's going to create a big stretch in the hamstrings on the back of the right leg as well as the gluteal muscles. So even bring your forehead down towards the shin of that right leg. Big stretch. Slowly walk the hands now to the other side. Both hands come to that left foot now. Bend the elbows a bit. Align your upper body to the extent you can with that whole left leg. Now lengthen the spine. So the crown of the head is reaching towards the pinky toe of that left foot. And then let it go back to center. Now pivot on your right heel, bending the right knee. Bring the hands down on either side of the right foot. Come up on fingertips and straighten the right leg. Now bend the right knee and do it a second time. Straighten the right leg. Reach that right hip back, pull the left hip forward a little bit. And then bend the right knee. Transfer the weight to the right foot and step the left foot forward, forward fold. Let your head drop down. Come to a half lift now with the hands at the top of the shins, lengthening the spine. And then as you exhale, hinge at the hips and bring the hands to the mat and step the right foot back so the left foot is forward. Come up on fingertips. The left knee is still bent. Keep your spine long and about parallel to your mat. Now straighten the left leg. Keep the spine nice and long. Pull that left hip back. Pull the right hip forward, feeling that stretch in the back of the left leg. Mm. And then bend the left knee. Do that a second time, reaching that left hip back, pulling the right hip forward. The spine is still long and about parallel to your mat. And bend the left knee. Step the left foot back so it meets the right foot, plank pose. Now flow through vinyasa, either knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga dandasana, upward facing dog. And then downward facing dog. Stretch it out, lots of length in the spine. On an inhale, reach your right leg high and then step the right foot all the way forward so it ends up between the hands. Spin the left heel to the mat and rise to warrior two. That right knee is bent, your gaze is forward over the extended right hand. Relax the hands, relax the fingers. Anchor into the pinky toe of that left foot. Now extended side angle, elbow comes to knee, reaching with the right hand, stretch it out. Keep anchoring into that pinky toe on that left foot. Rise reverse triangle pose, straightening the right leg, reaching up and back with the right hand. Press into the right foot now, stretch. Arms come out to a T with the palms facing down. Press in the left foot, reach the right hand forward and drop it down, triangle pose. Breathe. Two more breaths, stay with it. Now bend the right knee and then rise back to warrior two. Straighten the right leg. Pivot on that right heel so the toes on the right foot point forward. Reach the arms up and overhead. And exhale the hands to heart center. Inhale, reach back up and then the arms come out to a T. Let's pivot on the left heel. Bend the left knee and find warrior two towards the back of the mat. Your left foot is forward. Your left knee is bent. Your gaze is over the extended left hand. Extended side angle pose, elbow comes to knee, reach with the right hand, press into the right foot. Notice the long straight line from the fingertips of the right hand through the pinky toe of that right foot. Stretch it out just a bit more. Rise to reverse triangle pose, reaching the uh, right or left hand rather up and back, pressing into the left foot, stretch. Arms come out to a T. Take a deep breath. 
Now press that left hand forward, drop it down, triangle pose. This is our second side. Notice the right hand stacked over the right shoulder. Right shoulder stacked over the left shoulder, left shoulder over the left hand. Both legs are nice and straight. Spine is long. Bend the left knee now. Then rise back to warrior two. Settle into warrior two. Now straighten the left leg. Pivot on the left heel. Wide legged stance. Reach the arms high. And exhale to heart center. Take a deep breath. As you exhale, hinge at the hips and fold forward. Keep the spine long. Let your head come down. You can bring the hands down to the mat now. Some of you will be able to bring your elbows down to the mat. One more breath. Hmm. Now come up onto the hands, straightening the elbows, and then heel till your feet in. And then bend the knees and just come to a seat. Once you're seated, let's find a cross-legged position. And let's actually bring the soles of the feet together. We'll come to um, cobbler pose. Bring the palms to the ankles so the thumbs are pointing towards one another and then pull up on the ankles and as you do that you'll feel your shoulders come back and then down so you pull up and then the shoulders come back and down not creating much of an arch in the back so the spine staying nice and long but the sitting bones are pressing down the tailbone is pressing down the chin is in a neutral position but the head and the ears are rising up, so we're lengthening the spine in this pose. Bodhikanasana. One more breath. <sighs> Let the breath go. <clears throat> now, keep the hands on the feet and just float the heels. Now we're going to come to butterfly pose, so bring the arms under the legs with the e with the uh, elbows, what are those things called? The elbows pressing into the inside of the knees and the palms on the outside of the feet. The spine is still nice and long. We can do this pose today in honor of the butterfly, the uh, sorry, monarch butterfly migration in Mexico, which apparently isn't uh, doing so well lately. But it's beautiful if you've ever seen it. Now release the arms under the legs, from under the legs, and bring the uh, hands to the outside of the feet. Then once you're there, keep the spine long and slowly straighten the legs coming into heron pose. The spine is still long, and if you can, you can bend your elbows, bring the elbows closer to the shins, deepening your movement into the pose, creating a big stretch in the back of the legs. Now, soles of the feet back together, spine still long, and then bring the feet down to the mat, and let's straighten the left leg. Sole of the right foot to the inside of that left leg. Reach the arms high, stretch up, and as you exhale, fold forward, bringing the hands down to the ankle or the foot on that left leg. Let your forehead come down towards the shin or the knee. Now think about reaching the top of your head towards the big toe on that left foot. Big stretch probably in the low back and also on the back of that left leg. Maybe even into the back of the left knee. Now release whatever you have a hold of with the hands. Reach the fingertips forward. Press into the back of the left heel and rise. Come up slowly with the spine still long so you engage the abdominal muscles. And then bring the arms out to a T. Now take a twist to the right. Bring the right hand down behind you. Press into that left heel on the right knee and lift the hips as you reach with the left hand. Press the right hand into the mat. Lift the hips even higher. Stretch with the left hand as you press into the left foot. That's it. Bring it down. Once the tailbone lands, 
swing around so the shoulders square to the extended left foot, reach the arms high, and exhale, fold forward for the second time over that extended left foot or left leg. Now reach the fingertips forward again, press into the back of the left heel and rise slowly, come back up. And then exhale, release the hands and bring them down. Let's go over to the second side. Bending the left knee, bring the sole of the left foot to the inside of the right leg, reach the arms high, lengthen, so really stretch. Now hinge at the hips and fold forward, bringing the forehead down to that chin or the knee of the right leg, lengthen the spine again. Think about reaching the top of your head towards the big toe on the right foot. I know that's creating sensation for you in the back of the right leg. If it's too intense, bend the right knee a bit. Now reach the fingertips forward, press into the back of the right heel and rise, come all the way up. Lots of engagement in the core, arms come out to a T. Take our twist to the left this time. Left hand comes down behind you, press into the right foot and then reach the right hand up and over, lifting the hips high, stretch it out. You let your head drop down here if you like. You can even look up towards the sky if you want to. Keep pressing into that right foot and reaching with the right hand. Now slowly release it. Let your butt come down to the mat, then swing the shoulders around so they're square to the extended right leg, fold forward second time over that extended right leg. Reach the fingertips forward now, press into the back of the right heel, engage the core, so tighten it up, reach up high, and then exhale, bring the hands down. Bring both legs out, let's bend the knees, once the knees are bent, bring your hands to the underside of the knees and then lift the heels up so that the heels are level with the uh, back of the knees. This is a supported half boat pose. From here, we're just going to release the hands and reach them forward into a boat or into an unsupported half boat pose. Bring the arms out to a T now. Reach the arms high and exhale to heart center. Inhale, reach back up. Exhale the arms to a T and then reach the arms forward so the palms face towards one another. Now straighten the legs into boat pose. Arms come out to a T now, reach the arms high, and exhale out to a T. Inhale, reach up, exhale and out. Inhale and up, exhale and out, and one more time. Inhale, reach high, and then as you exhale, let the heels float to the mat, bring your palms together, and then fold forward over both legs. Let your forehead come down towards the knees. Lengthen the spine. Now chin on chest, rounding the spine, rise. And as you exhale, bend the knees. Flip your palms now so the palms face up, arms are straight. And now slowly, you're gonna to need to engage the core. Slowly come down, you'll feel your tailbone pressing into the mat and then the sacrum right above the tailbone, and then each individual vertebra as you slowly come all the way back down. And then once you're on your back, find legs up the wall. And then from there, bend your knees and bring the soles of the feet to the mat, preparing for bridge pose. Make sure that your heels are under your knees, See if you can brush your heels with your fingertips. Now press the feet into the mat and lift your hips. Tuck the shoulders under the body. Interlace the fingers. Press the hips high. Bridge pose. Breathe through bridge. Two more deep breaths. And one more. Now, release the hands, bring the tailbone down, hug the knees into the body, keep the back of your head on the mat so the spine is still long, and bring the back of your shoulders down so the back of the shoulders press into the mat. Now bring the arms out to a T, straighten the legs, we're back to legs up the wall pose, keep both legs straight and bring the left leg all the way down. Now bring the right foot over to the left side. You can scoot your hips back to the right a little bit. 
And if you want, you can get a hold of the big toe on that right foot with your left hand. Soften the back of the right shoulder so it's resting on the mat and your gaze is towards your right hand. Just settle into our little supine twist and breathe. Now take a deep breath in and a big open mouth exhale. <sighs> you release the big toe on that right foot and bring the right leg all the way back up and bring the right foot down, leg stays straight. Left foot rises, scoot your hips over to the left a few inches and bring the left foot over to the right side, let it land. You can get a hold of the big toe with the right hand if you want and your gaze is off to the left, left hand reaching off to the left side. Now let your breath settle. Let it settle even more. Now take a big deep breath in and open mouth exhale. Ah. Release the big toe, press that right hand into the mat, reach the left leg up and bring the left foot down and center your hips on the mat and let's find Shavasana now. Give yourself a couple of moments to settle into Shavasana. And go ahead and adjust your position if you need to so that you feel truly comfortable on your mat. Make sure your eyes are gently closed. Now come back to your breath. Feel the breath moving slowly. Feel the breath returning to its normal rhythm. Let your breath slow even more. And let it slow even more. Now become aware of your heartbeat. Noticing as we did at the beginning of the practice that you may not feel the heart beating in the chest. You may feel it elsewhere in the body. Do your best to keep your awareness, your attention on the beating heart. Let everything else go. So that the beating heart consumes all of your awareness. Let awareness of the beating heart increase. Truly letting go of everything else. Come to a place where the only thing within your awareness is your beating heart. And now deepen that awareness even more.
Now ask yourself the question, how is it that I can sense my heart beating? Am I seeing it? Am I hearing it? Am I touching it? Am I smelling it? Am I tasting it? Or is there other sensation, some other sensory facility or faculty that is allowing you to sense your beating heart? You don't need to analyze the question or even really answer it. Just asking it is enough. Release your awareness from your heartbeat and bring your awareness back to your breath. Without creating any strain or discomfort, let your breath lengthen. Begin with five counts in and five counts out. So breathing in one, two, three, four, five, and then breathing out one, two, three, four, five. You'll notice this will just continue with that breath. You'll notice this a little longer than a normal breath, at least for most of you. The next time you inhale, breathe in for six counts. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then breathe out six counts. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Do that again, breathing in six counts. And breathing out six counts. Notice now how gentle and steady is your breath. Begin now to bend your knees. Once your knees are bent, roll to your side. On your side, cradle your head in your arm. Pause here for a moment. I love to take this time in my personal practice just to notice this position, this posture, and to see what it surfaces for me. Sometimes it's memories, sometimes emotions, sometimes thoughts, sometimes nothing at all. So just take a moment more to notice for you what comes up with your body in in this posture. Now keep your eyes closed as you slowly bring yourself to a seat. And once you're seated, bring your hands to heart center, pressing your palms together. Take a deep breath now, and then let the breath go. Do that one more time. A deep breath in, and let it go. Thank you so much for participating in this class. It's such an honor to be able to offer this class in this unique way. And now I offer you loving kindness. May you be happy and well, and may you be safe. May you be peaceful, and may you be at ease. Namaste.